If you've ever accidentally hot mic during an op and everyone said hot mic and you pretended like it wasn't you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you guys are looking to support the channel, make sure that you like and comment. The comment section is kind of like, imagine Mad Max, but there's no leadership from a Morton Joe. Or maybe I'm a Morton Joe, I don't know. It's awful. So get that in there and, uh, you know, comment, do do whatever. If you guys are looking to support the channel, we have multiple ways to do that. We have Gun Mag Warehouse. Uh, they uh, support the channel monetarily and we help them out. We do some videos for them and all that good stuff. Check them out on their channel. Trailer coming soon on that. And uh, by Max, if you guys are looking for ammunition, LAX ammo, and of course for plaid and outdoorsy stuff, Vertex, 25% off with Grantham. With those things out of the way, ladies, gentlemen, Everybody else attack helicopters. We are going to be talking about the F-4 Defense AR-15. So, F-4 Defense is a veteran-owned company. Pretty cool. I'm always down when uh, you, know, you have guys in the, who get out of the military and decide to do something kind of cool in the defense industry. I always like to see uh, what, they do, what they're doing, kind of what they're taking away from their service and what they build. So, I'm down with this. And we're going to be talking about this rifle. So, what is my relationship to F4 Defense. Well, nothing. Uh, I'm doing some work with a um, with Big Daddy Unlimited, which I've talked about a lot, kind of like Costco, right? Um, and they have sent me this rifle uh, to do a review on. That way, it's from a neutral third party, kind of remove some of that bias that might be having set uh, you might have from dealing directly with the company. So it's kind of a new kind of way I'm taking things. And so cool that they were able to do that for us. Anyhow, um, 4,000 rounds of ammunition provided. Uh, for me to review and shoot the dog piss out of this firearm. So pretty fun, pretty standard setup. Um, again, I'm pretty non-partial to anything. So let's get into this rifle right here. Okay, it's an AR-15, direct and pingent, all that stuff. By the way, I do love uh, DI guns. They are absolutely wonderful. Okay, good. Now this particular firearm costs anywhere from about 1900 to a smidge under 2000 depending on the options that you have on it. So it may seem pricey, but honestly, for everything that they have into it, it is pretty in line with what you'd expect of a rifle of this caliber. So the price isn't too off base. Now, if it's out of your price range, then you know don't buy it, obviously. <laughs> you know, there are plenty of great rifles that cost a lot less, but we're gonna be talking about this one today. So first off, let's start with the barrel. So the barrel is, there's a lot of great companies putting out great barrels, and the barrel that they have used is using 416R stainless steel. So with this particular barrel, you are guaranteed sub MOA accuracy with match ammo. And I've absolutely seen that to be the case. Um, with match ammunition, I'm easily uh, putting rounds directly where they need to go. So no problems there. In fact, like many other firearms out there, this is likely going to be more accurate than you because uh, they typically are. Okay, moving from there, we have the barrel, we're running a mid-length gas system. It doesn't appear to be pinned from what I can see. I could be wrong, uh, but I haven't seen anything about their gas blocks being pinned. Is it that big of a deal? No, because I love BCM and they also don't pin their gas blocks and they work fine for me. I know a lot of people get really kind of wound up over pinning gas blocks or not pinning gas blocks, but I believe with the correct installation on the correct barrels that it's not so much of an issue. Uh, that may change for me in the future as I test more, but I currently as of this video, I've not had trouble with non-pinned gas blocks. Okay, moving up forward here, we have the muzzle device. So the muzzle device is their own. It is their QR muzzle brake. Um, and I do have an issue with it. So the problem with this muzzle brake is that it is overly compensating the rifle. And so it's so hard to make a rifle that works for everybody because depending on training and grip and stance, people are gonna get different experiences from different rifles. Now for me and how I control a, uh, a weapon and how I shoot and due to the number of rounds I've fired, um, I consider myself uh, you know, moderately okay at controlling muzzle rise. So because of that, um, because I can control that muzzle rise pretty well, this has a tendency to overcompensate and drive my rifle down too far. So for me, I'm actually fighting the rifle and trying to keep the rifle up as opposed to the rifle typically recoiling a little bit up. So it's a very odd sensation to fire this, especially in rapid fire where I'm actually pulling up on the gun to keep it um, on target as opposed to pulling it down. And that's due to the overcompensation. Now, 
That being said, depending on where you are as a shooter, this might be advantageous to you. But for me personally, and I think a lot of you out there do a lot of shooting and actually practice, I would like to think that my followers actually shoot. I preached it enough. Um, I think it might be a little bit um, too much compensation. And it's for that reason that I like a more neutral uh, muzzle device, something like a Surefire three prong or just a standard A2 or something along those lines. Okay, we've talked about barrel, gas system, muzzle device. Let's get into the rail. So the rail, um, up here at the, at the beginning right here, we do have uh, QD slots for a sling. That is okay. Um, I know a lot of guys run, sling, run slings back here. I personally don't. I like to run my slings out front. Um, I've kind of gone back and forth, but mostly out front just because it's easier to stabilize a weapon when I sling it onto my back. So having the QD slot can be great for some guys. Now for me, it doesn't personally work. Um, I'm not gonna count it against the rail though, because the rail is well made. I actually really like the shape of it. It's very lightweight at around 10 ounces with everything on it. Um, the thing I don't like about this rail is at the end, I, I really like the inclusion of pick right here. You have Picatinny rails right here along with the M-lock, but I don't like the inclusion of this rail on the bottom. And I understand why they included it for our bipod guys and all that type of stuff out there, but um, for me, it kind of interrupts the flow of where I can kind of grip it. I'm not going to be gripping a gun out here, but I think that the M-Lock mounts work just as well. Um, I'm sure my precision guys will come out here and really like this feature, but for me, where I'm not running uh, you know, any type of bipod whatsoever, uh, it just kind of interrupts the natural flow and kind of makes it look, in my mind, a little kind of odd at the end. I'd prefer a much kind of smoother ending, kind of something similar to, say, the BCM MCMR, which just kind of ends out at the... It ends in M-Lock, that's great. But that being said, I don't mind the pick at the end. I think that's a good inclusion. It's just I don't like it at the bottom there. It's just kind of odd, kind of an odd design choice. And of course, for me, I would prefer to have QD slots out here. I'm not gonna count, it in against, count that against the firearm though, because that would just be unfair. But besides that, a great rail. I really like the feel of it, and I have nothing bad to say about it. I really like all the mounting positions, and it does look quite attractive, except for the end for me. Moving back from there, we have our upper and our lower receiver. So they're both billet, CNC machined. Um, so because of that, you're going to get some really good tolerances, and they can do some kind of cool designs and all that type of stuff. For me, I'm kind of more of a kind of traditionalist when it comes to an AR-15. I don't like kind of all the fancy little cuts, making it all futuristic, and all those kind of lightning cuts. I prefer something a little bit more standard, um, like we'd have in this BCM, and I know I'm compared against BCM, but BCM is kind of the benchmark with which I compare uh, other AR-15s. So I kind of like that smoother, kind of more retro look. Maybe I'm just turning into a FUD in today's day and age, but I'd like to think that the cleaner look just looks better to me. But if you're into this, it does look you know, good. It's fine. They did a really good job with the machining and all that. I just find it kind of bulky. Okay, moving back from there, you have a Ford Assist. I know there's a lot of you know, anger about that and butt frustration, but the Ford Assist lives on. Okay, bolt carry group is well made. No problems there, good proprietary coating that allows it to stay pretty slick without lube. <laughs> Don't always need lube. Uh, coming up here to the back, we have the charging handle. So they have made their own, and I believe it's their own, at least I haven't seen it before. And here's the thing, it feels a little flimsy to me. Uh, I would have preferred that they had used a well-established charging handle, like say a Radiant Raptor, or a Geisley um, charging handle or something along those lines, but they have chosen to use their own. And I don't know that that was the best choice given the price point. And I understand you know, that they have American made, American steel, everything like that, and they wanna make everything themselves, but there's a lot of great companies like, again, Geisley and Radian that make their stuff here in country using American steel and all that kind of stuff that I think are much better designs um, than what they have uh, put out uh, on this particular rifle. So. That's kind of my opinion on that. Um, feel free to argue against me on that. Okay, moving down to the lower right here, we have the selector. So the selector is, again, um, fine. It's not my favorite. I do prefer others. I do like the 45 degree throw. I do prefer a 45 degree throw. That being said, I prefer others like um, Radian. Again, I know I just like some of their stuff. On the opposite side of the rifle, um, I do like that the selector lever isn't as long. I have a problem with really long ones where they tend to stop on my hand. This one is short enough so it doesn't you know, get caught up when I'm flipping over to fire. So that has always been a huge hang up of mine. So I can appreciate that they did that. So good job on them. The lower is Ambi. So we have Ambi mag release right here. We have the mag release on the other side right here. Everything works fine. Um, this is fairly 
uh, standard when it comes to ambi lowers. It works very well. I have no complaints about it. It is very similar to a lot of really great companies, ambi lowers, and I'm sure that um, there's a lot of design similarities there. Bolt release on the left-hand side is easy to actuate with your trigger finger should you want to do that. No problems there. On the opposite side with the regular bolt release, it is oversized, and I find that very easy for doing reloads. I actually uh, do like that quite a bit, so I do like what they have done with the bolt release on this particular rifle. Okay, the magazine well is flared, makes for easy insertion, which is always important. We have the MFT grip right here, which is fine. It works great, no complaints. For the trigger, we are running an ELF trigger. So this is actually my first time running the ELF trigger, and uh, I was actually uh, fairly impressed with it. Um, I really liked it. You know, I'm a huge Geisley fanboy, and I really like Geisley triggers, but this one was exceptional. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to ghost the trigger. We're going to compare it directly with a Colt trigger, which of course there's going to be no comparison. The Colt trigger is obviously going to be heavier and more gritty, but we need to have a benchmark that we compare all the other AR-15s off of, and it's going to be the BCM with the Colt lower. So running that right there, we're going fl to flip it over to safe. Okay, you're going to put your finger down. I'm going to put my finger over yours and we're going to make some pottery right here. All right, listen to some music, a little Unchained Melody. Okay, no take up at all on the trigger. About a three and a half, three pound pull right there. Let's check the reset. Reset is how far I have to let my finger move forward before I can then pull the trigger again. Simple. Barely any pressure and I'm resetting. And I've definitely felt that when I'm firing the gun. If you've watched the clips of me shooting this, um, you can tell my cadence is pretty fast with this. Not as fast as I am with the JP rifle, um, but still incredibly uh, fast. I would say I'm getting about 0.11 to 0.12 splits, which is very good for me. So I've been very impressed with the trigger. Now, moving back from all of that, let's talk about the back end right here. and back. Back end is always important. Uh, we have the MFT stock right here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the minimalist stock. Um, I've never really used them. I've always been worried about them breaking and that type of thing. Um, it's held up strong. I've mortared this rifle and it's, I haven't, haven't had any problems. I just prefer other stocks due to one, I like to have a QD mount on my stocks. And it does have really great attachments for it to loop your sling, but I do prefer QD. Um, I just prefer a little bit ro more robustness from what I typically get from this stock. And you know, Jeffrey Gerwich has talked a lot about this stock and some of his write-ups. So I'd recommend looking at to some of his stuff, but not a huge fan of the stock, but it worked fine for the purposes here. Because it does add to a very lightweight rifle, just a smidge over six pounds. So good there. Question is now, we've talked all about everything going into this, but how does the rifle actually run? What does it feel like to shoot it? Um, it's actually not the most pleasant experience, and I don't know um, what that is specifically due to. I'd, be, I'd guess, I'd venture it has to do with the muzzle brake and the way it's angling the gas, along with the uh, buffer system that they are using. Um, it is a quick reset. The bolt moves fairly quickly, and so it resets. You can really push that thing really fast. But it is a very sharp I guess is the best way to describe it, recoil impulse, because it's so quick, um, which is kind of the best way I have of describing it. This is very sharp, very quick, but very flat. So although it kind of feels a little jarring, the rifle doesn't move, or what it, what it does want to do, of course, is it wants to push the rifle down a little bit, but it feels very flat overall. So I can't really say anything against it when it comes to that, other than, other than to say that um, it's kind of an odd sensation, and I definitely do prefer the more mild recoil impulse I get from like a BCM setup with uh, you know an H2 buffer or an H1 buffer um, and just running their BCM cops than I do particularly running this particular firearm. That being said, it is wholly adequate. It does run fine. It's just I do prefer other setups. So, you know, every time I kind of get to the end here, I, I like to talk about is it worth it, right? So, is this rifle going to be the rifle for you? You know, and that depends on a lot of factors because if you're a new shooter, no, it's not the rifle for you because um, it has a lot of very specific things that are specific to people who know kind of how they're shooting and whether or not that's going to work for them. And even if you do know what you want, I think in many cases you could be better served by spending a little bit less. Now, here's the thing. Let me say this. 
it's a great rifle, no problems there. I'm just not a, as huge of a fan of the styling, the rail, and the muzzle device. Because of that, I would typically recommend uh, something like a BCM, right? Running like a BCM MCMR 14.5 uh, with a BCM muzzle device, and then running like an arrow or a Colt lower. And if you need a better, better trigger, you know, throw in a Geisley or an Elf trigger or whatever trigger that you like, and then for, you know, around 1700 total with upper or lower and the trigger, you're running a rifle, in, my, in many cases, I think, that has a lot more attributes that I particularly like as a shooter than what I get with the F4 Defense Firearm. Now, that being said, firearms are very individual and very personal. You know, we're not in the military uh, for the, well, some of you still are, but if this is your personal rifle, it doesn't have to be a one-size-fits-all. And so for many people, the F4 Defense might be, um, you know, the correct rifle for them because it does look very cool. It's just that I'd recommend that you do some shooting, and if you are experienced, that you look at it, take a look, and see if it works for you. If it does, cool. It's a very good package. No problems there. It's going to run very reliably, and it has a great warranty. So, absolutely, it's going to work. But here's the thing. <laughs> Every time. If you don't train, you're not going to look cool shooting this. You're, you're still going to suck. So, get training, guys. That's what it's really going to come down to. If you have this, make sure that you have the money to spend on ammunition and training to make sure that you look wonderful with this. So, if you're looking for training, there are some great companies out there. You have guys like Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, who is my dad, who is Travis Haley. Uh, we have Esoteric, Tony Cowden, all these great dudes who have so much experience from uh, whether it be being overseas or being an instructor stateside or law enforcement or what have you, that you can really glean a lot from them. So please go out and learn from these people because knowledge is power, especially when it comes to shooting. So get out there, train and do those things. And that way you look cool with the F4 defense rifle because you know what? It is a cool rifle. Am I fast with it? Hell yeah, I'm fast with it. In fact, I'm faster with it than I am with the BCM. But that being said, I still prefer other setups a little bit more. So is it for you? Who knows? It could be. It's a cool rifle. Guys, thank you for watching. If you want to check out F4 Defense, get to their website. Good dudes, and they will definitely set you up and make sure you're good to go. Take care, and I have nothing else for you. Or do I? Oh my god, guys. Okay. Last thing. Wear deodorant. I don't know what it is about this generation or what the hell is wrong with you guys. But I've met so many people who are not wearing deodorant. And listen, <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm not even, I'm not going to justify it. Wear deodorant. Good God. Smell has so much to do with, with how people perceive you, uh, at least culturally within the United States. So wear deodorant. Take care of yourselves. Take showers. <laughs> I don't, I can't believe I have to say this. So there's always that one stinky kid in the military who comes into basic training and then you have to like throw him in the shower. Don't be that kid. Guys, thank you for watching. If you've gotten this far, don't forget about Big Daddy Unlimited. They are like Costco, but for guns, you have to buy a subscription, but then you're getting way cheaper stuff. Is it gonna be worth it? Only if you spend money on stuff. Otherwise, you're gonna be burning your money. Get in there, check out the link, check them out. Gentlemen, thank you for watching. Let me know what you're doing this weekend and take care of yourselves.